Hello, my amazing students. This is Mrs. A, and I love math. Today, we're doing Lesson 24 in our Saxon Course 3 book. We're talking about addition and subtraction of decimal numbers. Now, when we're adding or subtracting decimals, we must line up the decimal. Okay, so here we go with example one, and we're going to add 12.5 and 3.75 and two. Okay, so now when we're writing these numbers, we have to write them with the decimal lined up. So the first number was 12.5. So I'm gonna write 12.5 and the next number is 3.75. So my point has got to be right underneath the other one. So 3.75. And the last number is 2. 2 with no decimal. So here's the decimal. Here's the 2. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in the zeros just to make sure all the numbers have the same number of places behind the decimal. So I'm gonna make this a zero and this a zero, zero. Okay, that does not change the value of the number. That just helps me to add them more um, easily. So now notice that my decimal is lined up, one right on top of the other, and I have my, this is the hundredths place, tenths place, decimal, ones, tens. And each one of those um, numbers has those same values except in this tens column. Some of them are not that big. So now what are we going to do is put our little addition sign there. Zero. So we're adding. 0 plus 5 plus 0 is 5. 5 plus 7 is 12. Put down our 12, carry our 1. And our decimal is going to follow all the way down. 2 plus 3 plus 2 is 5, 6, 7, 8. And then just a 1 in the tens column. Now, that is how you add decimal numbers. You must line up the decimal and it helps to fill in zeros where you need to so that you don't get confused. Okay, now this is also example one, but part B. Now 5.2 minus 2.88. Now notice that my decimals are lined up. My ones are in the same place my tenths are in the same place, and I'm going to put a zero in the hundredths place because there's nothing there. So we want our decimal numbers to have the same, um, the decimals in the same spot, the same number of digits after the decimal, and we want to have corresponding place value on each one. Now, I'm going to subtract it just like any other normal number. So I'm going to subtract. I'm going to go ahead and just put my decimal down here. And other than that, I don't have to do anything else. Zero, take away eight, doesn't work. I'm going to come over here, make that a one, make that a 10. 10 minus eight is two. One minus eight doesn't work. I'm going to come over here, make that a four, make that a 11. 11, take away eight is three. Four, take away two is two, and the answer is 2.35. No, 2.32. I'm reading it in the mirror here. 2.32. Okay, so let's look at example two. Okay, this is example two. It says Gregory's temperature was 100.2 degrees Fahrenheit. The thermometer marked 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit as normal body temperature. How many degrees above normal was Gregory's temperature? Okay, so <clears throat> now remember, when we're dealing with decimals, a lot of times we'll just say 100.2 and 98.6. You know that the correct way to read that decimal is 100 and 2 tenths, 
and 98 and 6 tenths. However, um, most folks, including mathematicians, will read it 100.2 and 98.6 when we are doing a problem with decimals. So, um, you need to know what they are called correctly, but a lot of times people just don't take the time to read decimals correctly. So you need to be able to do both. So here we are. It says what, what, how many degrees above normal was Gregory's temperature? So this was Gregory's temperature and this was normal. So aren't we going to subtract? Now I carefully wrote the decimals already with the decimal place in the same line and they each have the tenths place. So, we have, we're going to subtract 12, well, first of all, 2 minus 6 doesn't work. So, we're going to go way over here, make that a 0, make that a 10, cancel, 9, 10, cancel, 9, 10. Whew. All right, so we basically have to go all the way over and bring that extra one over here. 12, take away 6, is 6. My decimal follows down. 9 take away 8 is 1. 9 take away 9 is 0. And 0 over here. So this 0 is a lead 0. And it is in front of the decimal. So we don't need that 0 at all. So 1.6 or 1 and 6 tenths of a degree of temperature is what he has. We are already on our practice problems. This is a quick lesson, isn't it? Okay, so here we are to arrange these from least to greatest. So we're going to look down through those numbers and say, do we have any negatives? And we do have a negative right here. So we're gonna put negative one first. And then of course the zero would come next. So we're done with those two numbers already. So then we're going to look and say, okay, do we have other numbers that come before one? So we just put zero. So one is gonna be kind of a marking spot. This one is before one, and that's a two. This one is before one, and that's after one. So let's look at these two numbers, one half and 0 0.3. Well, 0 0.3 is smaller than one half, which is the same as 0 0.5. So we're going to put 0 0.3 and then 1 half, which is the same as 0.5. And now we have 2 and 1.75, but 1.75 is less than 2 because it's the whole number 1 and then some change, and this is the whole number 2. So we're going to put 1.75 comma, I'm out of room, two would be the last digit in our arrangement. Okay, so the next one is compare. Okay, now we have, in each one of these, we have a different number of decimals after. So what we have to do is say one, two, three decimals, one, two, three, four decimals. It's usually easier to compare. I'm going to remove our little compare sign here. It's usually easier to compare if we put a zero there, okay? So remember, trailing zeros, we can add as many zeros behind the other numbers as we want to. And now notice we have a zero and a zero. No comparison there. They're both the same. Then we have a decimal and a decimal, a zero and a zero, a three and a three. Everything matches until we get to the thousandths place. Here we have a six, here we have a five. Now it really doesn't matter what happens after that point because six trumps five, doesn't it? It's greater. So we're going to go ahead and put our symbol, I'm gonna just put it right below because everything is so crowded. This number is bigger because of the thousandths place. It does not matter what is in the place after. That's a zero and that's a four. That doesn't matter because notice that's 60 and that's 54. 
So you can um, let you know 60 is bigger than 54. Their thousandths places are comparable, and this one is definitely greater. On C, we have two numbers that have not been put into a vertical arrangement for us. We're going to add them together. So remember, we must put our decimals in line. So 7.5, 12.5, 7, 5. Notice how my decimal place is right in line, okay? Now, I'm not going to worry about a putting a zero there, but it would not be improper to do so. If you want to put a zero there, put a zero there, but you don't have to. Here, it's usually just smart to put a zero just as a placeholder so that you don't get confused. Notice that the, the two numbers have the same format now, and the decimals are lined up. So it's going to make it so much easier to add them together. I'm going to come over here. 0 plus 5 is 5. 5 plus 7 is 12. 7 plus 1 is 8. Plus 2 is 10. 1 plus 1 is 2. Bring down the decimal right there. 20.25 or 20 and 25 hundredths. We're already on, on letter D of our practice set. So now we have 4.2 plus 12. Now, we could put a decimal on the end of it. We don't have to, but sometimes it makes it easier for you. So 12, anytime you see no decimal, the decimal is at the end. So if you want to, go ahead and put the decimal there. It's fine if you do. And there's one spot after the decimal on this number, so we can just put in one spot after the decimal on that one. It might make it a little bit easier for you to do it. So 4.2 plus 12.0. You see, when I have the same number of places, it does make it a little bit easier. All right, so the decimal's lined up. And I have the same number of places to the right of the decimal. So we're adding 2 plus 0 is 2, decimal point 4 plus 2 is 6, and 1. So the answer is 16.2 or 16 and 2 tenths. <clears throat> e says that we're going to add 0 0.3 and 0 0.8. Now, if you look at them, they both have the decimal and one spot after. So we're ready to add. We're going to write them down 0 0.3, 0 0.8, plus sign, same number of places after the decimal. It's all ready for us. 3 plus 8 is 11. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. Here's our decimal. 1.1 is the answer, or 1 and 1 tenth. Here's F, and F has two places after the decimal over here and only one place after the decimal over here. So just to keep things all lined up and as easy as I can make them, I'm going to add another trailing zeros. Trailing zeros after a decimal. You can have as many of them as you want. They do not change the value. Now, you don't want to add des zeros before the decimal. On the left of the decimal, they are going to make a difference. But to the right of the decimal and right of any other number, they're not going to make a difference. So now we're going to, they're not acting as really a placeholder. They're just acting so that we can make sure we have the same number of decimals just to make sure we don't make an error when we're adding. Okay, so what we're going to do is 11.46 minus 3.60. We're going to subtract. Now, 6 take away 0 is 6. 4 take away 6 does not work, so we're going to come over here and take one away at 10 over here, 14 minus six is eight. 
bring down my decimal and zero, take away three doesn't work, but this, when I bring this over, I can take it off or it can just say, okay, that's 10 minus three is seven and 7.86 is properly read as seven and 86 hundredths. Okay, so here we are on G. 5.2 minus 4.87. Okay, notice this one has two places behind the decimal, and this one only has one place behind the decimal. So I need to make it the same number of places behind the decimal. So I'm going to add a zero after the two. So 5.20. Now remember that zero changes nothing. It's a trailing zero after the decimal, and there are no numbers <coughs> after it. So now minus 4.8, <coughs> excuse me, 7. So now we're going to subtract. Everything is lined up exactly the same on both sides. 0, take away 7, doesn't work. So I'm going to borrow 10. Take away seven is, I didn't mean this, 10 take away seven is three. And then one minus eight doesn't work. So I come over here, make that a four, bring that 10 over. 11 take away eight is three. Decimal below all the decimals. Four take away four is zero. 0 0.33 or 33 hundredths. Now, H, <clears throat> we have 3 take away 2.94. 3 is a whole number taking away 2 place decimal. So we're going to change the 3 to 3.00, which changes nothing. It just gives it the same form of the other number, 2.94. Line up those decimals. We're subtracting. Zero minus four doesn't work. I have to come way over here, make this a two, make that a 10, make that a nine, and a 10. 10 take away four is six. Nine take away nine is zero. Two take away two is zero. Zero point zero six or six hundredths. And I says, how can you check your answers in problems F through H? Well, F through H were all subtraction. So we can check subtraction with addition. We can check addition with subtraction. So basically, addition and subtraction undo each other, don't they? Okay, so now we're going to read J, which is our last practice problem before we start our written practice. It says, J, the weather report stated that the recent storm dropped 1.50 inches of rain, raising the season total to 26.42 inches. What was the seasonal total prior to the recent storm? Explain how you found your answer. Okay, so the recent storm was 1.50 inches of rain, which brought the seasonal total to 26.42 inches of rain. So <clears throat> it says, how do we figure out what the seasonal total was before the 1.50 inches of rain? So we're going to subtract. We have the total. 26.42 inches of rain, and we're subtracting 1.50 inches of rain that just occurred to find the seasonal total before we had this big storm. Okay, so two take away zero is two. Four take away five doesn't work, so we come over here, make that a five, make that a 10. 14 take away 5 is 9, 5 take away 1 is 4, and 2 take away nothing is 2. So before the big storm, 
0.92 was the seasonal total, which is 24 and 92 hundredths. Now, it says that we're to explain how we found our answer. Well, because we're looking for what happened before, we're going to subtract the storm's um, inch amount to find out what it was before. So total minus storm gives us previous total. And we are on our written practice now. Okay, so now we're working on our written practice. And the first one says, Irina ran one half mile in three and one half minutes. At that rate, how long would it take her to run two miles? So we have one half mile in three and a half minutes, and we're looking for how long it will take her to run two miles. So how long? Okay, so let's think about this. The easiest thing to do in this case is to figure out how long it takes her to run one mile. So here we have a half a mile in three and a half minutes. So if she, if we wanted to find how long it takes her to run one mile, wouldn't we just multiply by two and two? Okay, we're doubling both the miles and the minutes. And so one mile Double three and a half is seven minutes. Okay, well, if it takes her seven minutes to run one mile, assuming the same speed, how long will it take her to run two miles? Well, two miles is twice one mile, so we're going to double both. And wouldn't it be 14 minutes, which is double the seven minutes to run one mile? So 14 minutes gives us two miles. So the answer is 14 minutes. Number two, we have, there were 180 people watching the football game. If seven tenths of the people watching the game were sitting on the home team bleachers, how many people were sitting on the home team bleachers? So aren't we looking for seven tenths of the people in the stadium. They were watching the football game. So we're looking for seven tenths of 180. That's all there is to it. So we're going to look at 180 divided by 10. Since this is in the numerator and this is the denominator, can't we cancel out 10 and cancel out 10 to get 18 times 7? Okay, so let's move up here. 18 times 7. 8 times 7 is 56. 1 times 7 is 7 plus 5 is 12. 126 people were sitting on the hometown bleachers. All right, number three. It says the Pacific team defeated the Atlantic team by a score of five runs to three. What fraction of the runs was scored by the Pacific team? So if we're talking about five runs to three, Pacific was five, Atlantic was three, but then they're asking what fraction? So think about it. If Pacific at the end of the game has five runs on the board, and Atlantic at the end of the game has three runs on the board. What was the total number of runs made? Five plus three is eight, isn't it? So there were eight total runs. So it says, what fraction of runs scored by Pacific. Okay, so total of eight runs and Pacific scored five. So Pacific had five eighths of the total number of runs. Okay, so now we're on number four and four says we're to add 1.23, 12.3, and 123. Notice that they have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Pretty cool. Okay, so 1.23, 1 1.23, 1 12.3, 
So I'm going to move over here so that I can line up my decimal. Oops, I forgot one. 12.3. And lastly, 123. So that's going to be over here. 123. Decimal is after. So I'm going to fill in to make all of my numbers the same number of digits after the decimal. Notice how my decimals are lined up. When you do that, you can certainly see what your biggest number is and what your smallest number is, right? So now when I add them, I'm going to follow regular addition because I have lined up the place values. This is the hundredths place, the tenths place, the decimal, the ones and the tens and the hundreds. Okay, so we're just going to add. 3 plus 0 plus 0 is 3. 2 plus 3 plus 0 is 5. Decimal point. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. 1 plus 2 is 3. And 1, 136.53 or 136 and 53 hundredths. And number 5 says... The average low temperature for November 1 in a certain town was 41.5 degrees Fahrenheit. The low on November 1 last year was 38.6 degrees Fahrenheit. How much lower was that temperature than the average? Okay, so on November 1st, the average temperature in the town was 41.5 degrees. Last year, though, it was 38.6 degrees, and we're trying to find out the difference between them. How much lower was this than the average? Are we subtracting? So 41.5 minus 38.6. Didn't leave myself much room, did I? So 5 minus 6 doesn't work. I'm going to make that a 0, bring the 10. 15, take away 6 is 9. Let's see if I can put a 9 there. Decimal. 0, take away 8 doesn't work. I'm going to come over here, make that a 3. Bring that, make that a 10. 10, take away 8 is 2. 3, take away 3 is 0. Okay, now that's a 0. We really don't need the 0, though, because we already have something before the decimal. So 2.9 degrees Fahrenheit was the difference in the two temperatures. And we are about done. We're on number six and number seven. The first one, number six, says four-fifths times two. Now, remember, it's easiest if we go ahead and make two into a fraction by putting a one underneath. Since there's nothing to, to cancel, I'm just going to multiply straight across. Four times two is eight. 5 times 1 is 5. 8 fifths is improper. I'm going to divide 8 by 5 one time with 3 left over. So 1 and 3 fifths. 1 and 3 fifths is the answer for number 6. Okay, so now number 7 is division by a, by a whole number, but I'm going to go ahead and change it to division by a fraction by just putting a 1 underneath. When I divide by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So let's think of another way to write this. We're going to flip this one over and change this division and multiplication. A lot of you say, keep, change, flip. And that's a nice little acronym for when we're dividing by a fraction, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to change this one to times. We're going to flip this one over to make it one half. And we just keep this one right the same way. Keep, change, flip. Okay, so now what do we have? Four and two will cancel with a two and a one. 2 times 1 is 2, 5 times 1 is 5, and the answer is 2 fifths. We are done with lesson 24. Now it's time to go do the rest of your homework. This is Mrs. A, and may God bless your day.